Hey everybody, it is Egg and Baby in the morning. Hello, Baby. She doesn't know what I'm saying. She's she's having a good day, though, so far. Eden, okay. Wouldn't you say you're having a good day, Baby? Wouldn't you say you woke up? Oh, dude, Polyphemus. 70WQTVK3. Uh, you, you woke up. You had a delicious uh, 200 milliliters of milk. I mean, you're, you're, you're drinking about half a pint of milk per morning, baby. That's like, it's really good. It's more milk than I've consumed in the last decade. Well, that's not true. It's more liquid milk than I've consumed in the past decade. I'm sure, I mean, I've, I've cooked and, you know, you know, with mashed potatoes, oftentimes you'll want to use some milk there. Um, and of course, like all, all sorts of baking, and including, you know, breads that I probably consume on a regular basis contain milk. I'm not trying to flex and be like, I'm living a milkless existence. Um, I'm just, you know, the, the concept of a cold glass of milk doesn't appeal to me. I get annoyed as well, because, you know, we have this, uh, it's a service called HelloFresh. It's popular worldwide. They, they give you recipes and send you a box with the ingredients and then you cook the recipes and... You know, you, you try not to think about the fact that you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> this saved me 15 minutes of grocery shopping and it cost me like 8 bucks a plate. Yo, that speed upgrade though, very nice. Let's see if we can get an arcade here. Like, if we can get the 5 cents, get an arcade on the next floor, like, this run's already over. If it's not already, already over. Um, but one of the things that annoys me is like, look, they always assume you've got some sundries in your house, right? So they they don't give you the the cooking oil, which I think is understandable. Like if it's if if you expect to do any cooking in your home ever, you probably got some form of of cooking oil. I would expect. Um, then it gets a little spicy. They never include butter, and I'm sure some of it is that like some of it I'm sure is margarine based, but some of it or should I say mm, margarine based? I uh, thank you. Um, but, uh, the baby's looking at me like her father has just lost her mind. Um, either way, I'm sure some of it is margin-based, you know, they make a little bit more money if they don't have to give you the butter as well. Um, but, uh, you know, it's also, because it's dairy, you know, it, it's kind of perishable, and, and the number of times, like, I've seen not our HelloFresh, but, like, a neighbor's HelloFresh sit on their front step for, like, 36 hours before they take it inside, but they still consume it anyway. I'm assuming it's is just scary to me. What a what a floor here. So so short. So I'm sure that there's some perishability, but I don't know. It, it's it, is it really like how how much faster does dairy spoil than meat at room temperature? You know, it, it can't be like a, a market difference. I, th I don't know, but it's annoying sometimes because they're like, oh, and then just add like you know. Half a cup of milk. Hey, baby, you okay? She went... They just go into your fridge and add half a cup of milk. And I'm like, well, we don't have milk in our fridge. Because we... I mean, sometimes we have, like, oat milk or almond milk. But that doesn't really go well in the mashed potatoes. And then they're like, well, you can just go to the grocery store and buy some. And you're like, hey, excuse me, HelloFresh. Know your place, okay? Bless you, by the way, baby. Bless you. Like, you recognize I'm getting HelloFresh so I can go to the grocery store a little bit less, and then you're like, yeah, just buy some milk. Come on, man. It's ridiculous. It's madness. Just annoys you a little bit. The butter we, we often have, just because, you know, I cook with butter, you know, outside of the HelloFresh context as well, and it's always... Oh, wow! <laughs> it's always nice to have it on a bit of toast or something like that, or a, a, a Belgian waffle. Hey, honey. I can't help but notice she was like so quiet. She was so quiet, and then as soon as the Isaac starts, oh no! But you're not. Maybe you're more of like um, a Wizards Lizard fan. You think? Maybe she's like Place Balanki. Place Balanki. There could be a. Well, I don't actually believe this, but you know, the, for the purposes of the bit, there could be a connection there. I played a lot of Spelunky too, like you know, the month before she was born. So maybe she's she's used to hearing like, "What the heck is what the heck is even that?" Anyway, this run, like, if baby, I'm just gonna be honest. Like, if if we have to, you know, we could just call the episode here. I think my opponent, also known as the game itself, is is likely 
to resign is my expectation. Um, there is no path to victory for them. They will be destroyed. Um, what can they do, right? We already have an incredible position. Do we have a material advantage, to put it in chess terms? <laughs> I, would, I would say yes. I'm sorry, I'm excited about chess. Twitch Rivals is on uh, Tuesday. Haven't been playing very well lately, but that's fine. You know, it's going to be fun regardless. As long as you go in with, with limited expectations and... Hey, baby. What appears to be the conundrum? What appears to be the problem? My sweet baby. My grunty baby. I'm just gonna go ahead and say get used to it. <laughs> I think she's gonna she's gonna go like a I don't know, what, what's something that makes that sound a lot? Uh, uh, she, you, like, she's gonna sound like a, like a bad hard drive for at least another 10 minutes. Would be my expectation. We, we've, we've managed to, you know, quell it for just a little bit here. She looks puzzled. What did I tell you? I knew, I knew it was coming. That's all right. The baby, you know, you had a great day. It's uh, we we had a really good day off uh, after the Isaac episode ended. I mean, the Isaac episode was fine as well. Um, we it it was another mini major milestone. I mean, actually, like today is let's not call it a major milestone. Like as far as major milestones or as far as milestones go, today is kind of like a small one. But it is your your fifth month. You're you're five months old today. Yeah, you do you feel like this is the oldest you've ever been? What's up with that, right? Five months. It is crazy to think. Like it's one of those things where I'm like, you know, th some days are hard and some days are easier than others. But uh, time has flown for sure. The fact that it's been almost six months already is is pretty absurd. Um, and then you know, once you you get into this kind of corridor. Uh, it's nice because, you know, we, we took the bassinet off of the stroller for anybody that, like me, was kind of maybe baby ignorant before I, we had the baby, obviously. Um, give me a guppy item or, okay, just uh, slap me in the face. All right. See you on March 31st. Um, that's when uh, Repentance comes out. Uh, bassinet is basically like a basket that the that the baby, uh, she she lays in with her back, like like on her back tummy side up. I don't know, this is a weird way to describe it. <laughs> but you know what I mean, right? It's like, it, it's a bassinet. It's a basket. To, it's like a little baby bed, kind of. And then, um, ooh, uh, redemption? I, you know what? We're going, we're going hard on this one. Is there an arcade here, too? Is that why I was coming over here? It was, indeed. Um, let's do this, then. Absolutely. And uh, we, we've replaced that. You're supposed to replace it around six months, but we were feeling a little saucy um, with a, a chair. So now when we roll her around on, in the great outdoors, she doesn't have to look uh, directly at the sun, which I think is probably a positive. Instead, she can kind of look uh, straight ahead, which is nice. I, I think she had a good time. Yeah, wasn't that, a, wasn't that fun yesterday? Although, I don't know, if you're like an introverted baby, I think it might be kind of annoying. Um, because you're constantly like... Like people are, whenever they see you, they're going, Oh my god, look at that cute little baby! You know, like, you, you really can't escape it, but... I don't know, I think it's kind of like... We've already been to our deal with the devil, but that's okay. Isn't that one of the... I wouldn't even call it a perk of being a baby, but when you're a baby, you don't know what's up. Like, she's making friends everywhere she goes. Later in life, a little bit of her, you know, the misanthropy that her her parents have might be passed on. We'll try not. We're going to tell her the world's a beautiful place. There's nobody out here that would do you harm. Um, but eventually, you know, she's going to haggle or something like that and realize she got ripped off. And then she's going to become the Joker. It, it, it's a natural... Every Everybody remembers where they were when they became the Joker for the first time. I remember. I've told the story a few times. In uh, ninth grade, I went to a convenience store with my friends that was across from my high school. Did not steal anything, for the record, but also did not buy anything. On the way out, um, 
the proprietor of the establishment just freaking tore into me. You kids, you come in here with your backpacks and you go, you giggle, 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 hang out around the chocolate bars, like never come in here again. And I was like, guess what? I'm the Joker now. You turn me into the Joker. Didn't, and I, I've never shoplifted, although I will admit, I stole a grape once um, from a, a grocery store when I was like two years old. Maybe I was probably like four or five. And, and I was like, I, like I sampled it, you know? Which is, I've, I've seen adults do it at, at the grocery store, which is how I know that they didn't have the same <laughs> lesson learned that I did. I just picked it off the vine and went like, yoink! And then my mom was like, you know, that's stealing. And I was like, that's stealing? And I think I broke down and into tears. Like any story you remember before the age of five, it, you probably remember it either because of just like a, a stroke of luck where your memory worked there, or alternatively because you were uh, traumatized. Hello. Hello, we have a happy baby. Yeah. Oh, look at that big smile. Oh my god. Yeah, she's probably even more happy because she's like, I don't have to listen to, to the same stories daddy's told like 75 times again. I've only been on this earth for five months and I've, I've heard all these stories before. Get boo. Yeah. Happy five months, baby. Hmm. We'll just blow this up. A everything's great on this run. A little, a, a tears upgrade would go a long way. You know, I'll tell you the coupon I think is, is delectable. And what if, I, I don't really value these items to be honest with you. Okay, bye baby. She ate at um, like 8.05. So she's probably getting a little hungry. Okay, goodbye baby. Love you too. Alright, that was a nice little family moment there. Um, I think I'm going to try to use the coupon on a potential deal with the devil. It, it honestly would be really nice to get a battery along with it. Or uh, like the, the full battery, not a battery charge. Because being able to use it twice on the same deal with the devil would just be like unbelievable, right? Oh, and now Tomo would like to leave as well. That's, that's fine. I can understand why. Tomo, can you just wait until I finish this room? I'm realizing now, by the way, hold on. Despite my confusion uh, and, and distraction here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, we'd actually prefer to coupon on the shop because of this. Whoa, sorry, buddy. <laughs> there you go. I scared Tomo. I kicked the, the baby toy. Okay. Um, we, we don't want to use our Joker card. We've already seen what's on the deal with the devil. It's garbage. We would rather use our Joker card to... Or not Joker. We'd rather use our coupon to try to get the battery here. Mmm, the battery. The battery. An attempt was made. Either way, take me down. But yeah, it was a good day off. Can't really complain. Can I tell you, it, it, I, at the risk of becoming like a late night, um, you know, talk show host style of, of bit here, uh, I watched a documentary on HBO yesterday about Tiger Woods. And I think, you know, I was like maybe 20 when the... I, I was, I was a, a little kid, you know, I was like 9 or 10 years old when Tiger Woods became one of the most, uh, you know, famous athletes on the planet. And then I, I would say during... My university experience from like 2006 to 2010, Tiger Woods was probably close to the most famous person in our world. I'm not even a golf fan, um, but but everybody knew who Tiger Woods was, obviously, and they they still do. But you know, obviously, in like 2009, he, he fell from grace. I think when you you know when you're 20 and he he falls from grace, uh, you know, due to Let's just call it, uh, he's addicted to love, was was his claim. There was a lot of, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? People were very incredulous when Tiger Woods said he had a, uh, a love addiction. They're like, oh, yeah. You know, well, he, that's just called um, being a man, you know? Even I remember South Park did, like, a whole episode about it. Um, where it was just like, you know, it's just normal or something like that. Watching this documentary and, and being a little bit older, like having some more perspective on things, I'm inclined to believe that that man had a real addiction. I'm not trying to take his side or anything like that, but but let me let me plead my case here, okay? Um, 
Tiger Woods had a, a full-time job that was very demanding. You know, it, whether or not it was grueling is, is one thing, but, you know, it demanded a ton of his time. He had, uh, you know, a family, a wife and two kids. And at the same time, this dude had 14 mistresses. I think it's one of those things where, like, when you're a little younger, you sort of don't understand. You're like, oh, yeah, he was cheating with, like, some ladies. No, this guy was maintaining his family life and then also 14 separate pseudo relationships like i don't know you're like just because they were a mistress doesn't mean they were ha no he was like texting them and you know he, he was like like basically being like a, a boyfriend to like 14 other women it's cr dude and it, here's the case i'm gonna make here okay i am strapped for time i got an easier job i would say I've got, you know, one less kid and zero mistresses. And there's days where I'm like, man, I really wish I could just take a couple hours in the afternoon to, you know, get some reading done. This guy, how do you... No person in their right mind would ever willfully, unless under the power of some kind of compulsion, maintain 15 separate relationships simultaneously. I, do, I don't believe... That's... I, and again, like, I'm, I'm just saying... At, at the end of all of this, I'm more inclined to believe that Tiger Woods had some sort of compulsion or addiction. <laughs> I, he didn't have the healthiest upbringing, that's for sure. Um, but on top, I, I remember in, in they showed clips in the documentary too of like all the late night hosts, you know, roasting him. And you know, it's a it is a funny story, and you know, it, people love to see you know a, a golden boy fall from grace and stuff like that. And he did like you know commit essentially the ultimate betrayal to his his wife in particular. Not a good thing to do, obviously. And if he had, like, three mistresses, I would be like, this guy's a scumbag. And he might still be. But 14 is where I'm like, man, you need to, like, get some help. <laughs> it's like if somebody told me that they drank, like, like 12 beers a night. Versus if they told me they drank, like, three beers a night. They drank three, I might be like, hey, man, come on, you know, you gotta treat yourself better than that. You don't need to drink three beers every night, just cut back a little bit. If they were like, I drink 12, I'm like, I'm driving you to the hospital right now. You know, it's the difference between, like, he, he had lost power, I think. I don't know if, if it, you, you can be capable of understanding this unless you have, like, you know, a, a spouse and maybe also, uh, there we go, that's what we're looking for. Maybe also, like, kids of your own? The fact that... Okay, sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind. And you know what? Let, let's take it a step further. I don't know if I want the other one yet, though. Occasionally, you know, you'll hear a story... And it's more than occasionally, which is kind of staggering to me, but... You'll hear stories about, like, yeah, like, when I was growing up, my dad went away on business a lot, and then, you know, 20 years later, we found out that he was actually, you know, basically living a double life like he had two families simultaneously when you hear that you're like and it's not that again i want to be very clear i'm not being sympathetic to the guy i'm really you know the, the first thing you think of is like okay kind of a scumbag the second thing you think of is like where did he find the time like it's it's crazy but at least like with two you're like i could sort of get it you know you could cut some corners you you, you know spend a little bit less time on the uh, on the stamp collecting, and and maybe I guess if if you were really dedicated to being like kind of a piece of garbage, you you could make that work operationally. But like fourteen, I mean he wasn't going to like you know kids soccer practice and stuff like that. But it's enough to just be like, like I I, I want to interview him, and again not instructionally, but just to be like, just walk me through what like a week in the life of Tiger Woods was like in two thousand nine. You were winning major tournaments left, right, and center. Nobody could touch you. You know, you were you were like the the in contention for possibly being one of the greatest athletes of all time. And then on the side, you were being a husband to like fourteen different women. Like, are you? Do you have like a time machine? Do you have the box from uh, Primer where you can get in and like a you know duplicate yourself and stuff like that? It just doesn't make sense. I'm just like watching the documentary. I was like, man, this guy is good at golf, but also like, my God, is he, he, you don't ever like Tiger. You never 
just take an afternoon to be like, I'm just gonna kind of like chill out on the couch. Like, is that the point? He must, and I know that I'm fixating on this, but it is, it's it's kind of unfathomable. I mean, if you think I'm fixating on it, they made a two-hour documentary about it, you know? So, like, <laughs> I'm not the only one. Let me put it that way. Okay, hold on. Come on. Come on in, buddy. But he must have had, like, people on his personal staff that were basically just dedicated to, whatever, just use a bomb, to organizing this. Can you imagine being such, like, a, a, a serial cheater that you hired somebody to keep your mistresses straight? Like, it's... <laughs> it's just madness, man. Like, I don't know, maybe... And this is, uh... I guess is again... I, I had a much more normal upbringing, I suppose, but... Like, at some point, like, you're... I, I, that's, that's why I believe it's, a, like, a, an addiction or, you know, some kind of cognitive failing, right? Because, like, you're the best player in the world of golf. Everybody loves you. Um, except maybe Phil Mickelson. Um, you know, you got a, a, a lovely, beautiful family, fulfilling career. All you gotta do is not have 14 mistresses. Preferably zero, I'm sure, it would, would be for the best. Like, all you had to do was just not, it was just not do it. I don't know. We're, I guess we're getting into uncomfortable territory here, but... It is weird watching, like, stuff like this that happened in living memory. Um, but, but then getting, like, a, a much deeper sense of context for it. It's like, I remember it happening, but then, like, learning about it, you know, and, and all the situations that surrounded it. Because, you know, for, for, you know, the people watching on, on TV, myself included, it's kind of like... Hey, Tiger Woods, something, 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 golf clubs, haha, uh -huh, you know, upvotes to the left. Um, but, you know, to, to get the deeper story of how that, like, impacted the people involved. Very, very sobering, you know, getting getting the tale of it that, that isn't just, like, uh, you know, punchlines. I finished watching that, that Cecil Hotel documentary, too. I, I do not recommend it. I think it's really bad. <laughs> I apologize, but I, I genuinely do think that the, the show is just not good. Um, and there are much better true crime documentaries. And I don't know if anybody else has watched it. I'm, I'm sure there's people here that have. Again, interesting case. I know I, I touched upon this, uh, you know, in the last episode. Um, but the, the internet detectives involved in this case were, were driving me crazy. Like, eventually, by the end of it, they kind of come to their senses. But still, there's like... Like, the one guy who got really into the case, and, uh, you know, like, he he found someone on Skype who lived in the area where her body was buried, and then, like, you know, he video called, and the guy touched the grave, and he was like, that's how I got closure, and I'm like, dude, what are you t <laughs> I'm sorry, it's like, it's very judgmental, and obviously he's going through some stuff, but I'm like, dude, you don't know her like that doesn't mean you can't be uh, affected by it don't get me wrong but like you like inserted yourself into what is actually just the tragic tale of like you know accidental death and and mental illness of, of the the death of this young lady and but it's like you've made it like weirdly kind of like about you i don't know like me and uh, again like i'm z list z z z resident sleeper list famous but like, if I die in a in a tragic accident, you do not have my permission to make a pilgrimage to my gravestone. Okay, I I don't you, I I can't stop you, but that, uh, stop. Okay, that's for friends and family, and you know, I don't know. Like, if maybe I was a superhero, that's for the other superheroes to come over and they'll leave like my calling card on the grave, and then my hand will shoot out of it, and it'll go dun dun da da dun dun. Superman will return, and you know, blah blah blah. Um, yeah, I mean, again, I can't stop you, or, or can I? Um, you know, there you go, I'm gonna haunt you. But you don't, you don't, I don't want you coming to my gravestone. It's not for you. I don't know you. You know me, I don't know you. I kind of felt even bad, like, um, I forget the name of it now, but there's, like, a really famous church in, uh, London. We went there, um, because it's something you do, uh, Hold on. Let me... Famous Church 
in London. It is called St. Paul's Cathedral. That's that's correct. Okay. Just a just little gap in my brain there. Probably, I, I pushed it out of the way to fit the Tiger Woods story in, and now I, don't I look embarrassed. Um, but even then, like, I wouldn't say I felt bad, but I kind of felt like I was getting away with something when they're like, check it out, you know? That's where, uh, you know, the Iron Duke is buried. And I'm like, I don't even know who that is, but whoa. Like, I'm, I don't, I shouldn't have the right to see the Duke of Wellington's, you know, grave. I don't know who he is. <laughs> I have not even a fan. I'm just like, whoa, I know he's famous. Anyway, I don't know. This is a weird episode, but it's, I, I do recommend the Tiger documentary. It is, it's pretty crazy. The golf stuff, whatever. He's really good at golf. I mean, I'm like, I'm understating it, but you know, there's, there's lots of athletes who are very, very amazing at their individual sports. It's the personal life stuff where I'm just like, man, this guy is like, he unraveled. Anyway, for now, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed uh, the episode. If you did, click the like button. And hey, I'm live on Twitch every day but Saturday. Follow me there, twitch.tv slash northernline, and I'll see you next time. See you!